Today we're taking a look at A Little Wordy, the latest game from the Exploding Kittens, which is a diversion from what they usually offer. Mm -hmm. Before we get started, I want to thank Exploding Kittens for sending us a copy of A Little Wordy to check out and play. I gotta say, that does sound a little weird. <laughs> now, A Little Wordy was designed by Matthew Inman, uh, who most of you probably know better as, as The Oatmeal. Uh, of course, he's also the artist on this game. Now, Matthew was also the designer of Exploding Kittens, You've Got Crabs, Throw Throw Burrito, and a few other silly Take That style party games, all of which were released under the Exploding Kittens publishing brand. Uh, this is why I was surprised to learn that this latest game from Matthew and Exploding Kittens isn't a party game at all, rather a two-player, rather strategic word game. You can play it with teams, but we'll discuss that aspect more later. Yeah, it's two-player only. Now, Little Wordy is going to start off in the U.S. as a Target exclusive, with a manufactured suggested retail price of only $15 U.S. Now, a single round of a Little Wordy can be as short as uh, five minutes, maybe even less, uh, with most games ending in under 15 minutes. This is not a long, involved one. But it is the kind of game where you're probably going to sit down and play a bunch of rounds in a row. Now, in a little wordy, players are going to receive a random mix of letters, which you're going to use to form a secret word. Then you're going to hand all your letters to your opponent. Players then use clue cards to try to guess the opponent's word. Now, each clue earns your opponent's points, and your goal is to have the most points when both of your words have been guessed. So, we... Uh, you, uh. For a look at what you get with this new word game, be sure to check out our A Little Wordy unboxing video on YouTube. Now, overall, I was pretty impressed by the component quality in A Little Wordy. I especially love the player screens and the clue cards are of excellent quality. Like you're looking at good playing cards, like that nice plasticky feel. The art on them, of course, is very cute and very typical of the oatmeal. And they feature some pretty clever puns for the names of the clues. Now, one issue I did have with the cards is how small the text is. There is no way you can read these from across the table. Now, I realize after only a handful of games, you're probably going to memorize what each card does. There aren't many of them. But for the first few games, we had found we had to keep picking up the clues and reading them and then putting them back on the table. Now, we aren't exactly eagle-eyed, though, so young players with the right lighting might be able to manage it. I, I don't know on this one. Like, like some of these cards have a lot of text on them, and that's looking like between six and eight point font there. So I don't know. Like, there's no way I'm reading these unless they are sitting on the table right in front of me. So I admit it, my eyes are a little bad, but there's a lot of text. This is not a quick, easy-to-read clue. Now, my biggest complaint, which is probably not really a complaint, and I probably shouldn't be complaining about this at all because I'm spoiled. Uh, when I hear tile-based word game, I immediately think of games like Scrabble and Upwards and Bananagrams. And all of these games feature tiles, but they're not cardboard. They're either plastic or wood or Bakelite. And when I saw the cardboard chits and a little wordy, and if you watch the unboxing video, you can see this, I got to admit, I was both surprised and disappointed. Now, I did take a good look at the cardboard used for these because I was a little worried about them wearing out, and I don't think you have to worry about this. I don't know how to describe it, but, like, the cardboard's very condensed. It's very well-pressed. Like, they actually have rounded corners. They were pushed down so hard. That said, you may want to consider using something like coin capsules uh, to protect the tiles or varnishing them to protect them if you do expect to play this game a lot. Finally, I have to thank Exploding Kittens for a nice, big, fold-out rule book that uses nice, big, like, 14-point font. They could have easily just put out a little small booklet using a tiny font and two columns and shoved that into the tiny box. It probably would have fit better, but I definitely appreciate this pamphlet-style rule book they went with. Yeah. So how do you play this new word game from the oatmeal? All right, to start a game of a little wordy, you're going to take a player screen and a dry erase marker. You're then going to draw tiles from the bags. You're going to get seven consonants and four vowels. These are placed behind your screen so your opponent can't see what you're doing. You're then going to draw eight of the clue cards and place them face up between the players. Now, four of these come from what's called the vanilla deck, and four come from what's called the spicy deck. 
No, spicy deck doesn't indicate not safe for work, but rather more complicated cards that sometimes require or a, a bit of give and take between the players. So it's good to know, because honestly, I would expect something else from this company yes. in something called a spicy deck. Yes, which is why I felt the need to specifically point that out. Next, you're going to take your letters. You've seen what clues are up. You're going to rearrange them, and you're going to spell a non-proper noun word games so it can't be a proper noun so no names and titles and countries and stuff like that now this word can be anywhere from one to eleven letters long yes you can make a one letter word in a little wordy now once you have your word you're going to write it down on your screen and then you kind of fold the top half and kind of tuck it under it's really neat looking actually the way it works well designed and it leaves you a workplace worksheet area for trying to guess clues later so there you get it's, it's a really done well done player board so you're going to do that, and you're going to wait and see until both players are ready. And once you've done that, you're then going to swap your letter tiles. So the, you're going to mix them up, and the ones you just did, you just used to make your words you give to your opponent. The words, the letters they just used, they give to you. Now, starting with a randomly determined start player, you now try to guess each other's word using the letters in front of you and the clue cards in play. Now, each turn, a player either chooses one of the clue cards to use or tries to guess the opponent's word. Now, each clue card has a value on it. This is the number of berries you have to give to your opponent if you use that clue. And these clues vary greatly. So just to give you an example, uh, this is a small portion of them. So looking at a couple of the vanilla clues, we have the Dynowl Soar, which the clue ability is first letter. Your opponent tells you the first letter of their secret word. Now, that's really powerful. So it gives your opponent four berries. Now, Mana Tweet gives you relative word length. You build a valid word from the tiles you have. Your opponent then tells you whether their word is longer, shorter, or the same length as this. Now, that doesn't give you a lot of information, although at same length, it might. So that one's only worth one berry. Now, for one in the middle is the Bowen Sparrow. The ability is Letter Strike. Choose a letter from the tiles in front of you. Your opponent tells you if it's in their secret word or not can be really powerful, but not huge. So that one's worth two berries. The puns are, of course, much better, uh, arguably only of value with the oatmeal art alongside. Sorry, audio only folks. So those were vanilla clues. Here's a couple spicy just to get across. Uh, we have the two communist whose ability is let's share. Choose a letter that's in both sets of tiles. You and your opponent tell each other how many times that letter appears in each of your secret words. So there's that give and take. This can't be used if your opponent's already collectively guessed your secret word. Now, this is doesn't give you a lot of information necessarily, so it's only worth one berry. Now, YOLO DODO, which is the rhyme time ability, your opponent says a valid word that rhymes with their secret word. If no rhyming word exists, they have to make one up. And this one, you're going to get the end of the word pretty much guaranteed with. So this one is the strongest clue card in the game and is worth five berries. Definitely not a Dolph, though I suppose you could lean that way <laughs> if you wanted to make your rhymes up there. Now, the, the berries, do you start off with berries or are you paying out of a common pool? So you, what it is, is you don't want your opponent to get berries. So there's a pool of berries, and every time you use a clue, you give some of those to your opponent. Okay, so it's a common, it's a common pool it, It's of like, berries. yeah, there's a pool of berries. There's a bunch of berry counters, and then you throw them, whatever. I throw them in a wooden bowl in the middle of the table. And then every time you use a clue, you're giving berries to your opponent. Right. So instead of using a clue card, you can always try to guess your opponent's word. If you're right, and you currently have more berries than your opponent, you win because there's no way for them to catch up. You already have more. Now, if you have less berries than your opponent, your opponent's going to keep going and keep using clues and keep guessing and will continue to earn berries. At at any, or you will continue to earn berries. If at any point you end up with more berries than them, they you win because they can't possibly catch up because you're no longer giving them berries. Now, if they do manage to guess your word while well, they still have more berries than you, then they win. Now, with guessing clues, um, it's almost worth doing because at this point, your opponent just gets two berries if you're wrong. So due to this, or sorry, even if you're right, either way, they get two berries. No, it's an incorrect guess. Sorry, an incorrect guess at this point, your opponent gets two berries. And honestly, it can be more cost effective to just guess a couple words in a row. 
if you've narrowed things down to like one or two or a small handful of words, instead of having to go with the random clue cards, you might be better off trying to guess the word directly. It's only a two berry penalty. And that's it. That's all there is to a little wordy. So simple enough. I can see how the clues make word choice so much more important. Now, mm -hmm. to be clear, uh, do you pick the word before the clues are on the table or are the clues already on the table? They are already on the table. You actually, technically, I said you grab your tiles first. Technically, you put the cards out and then you draw your tiles. But both happen before you're making words. So you can you can deliberately choose your yes. word to avoid the clues. Oh, trust possible. me, I, I made this mistake. Because I didn't look at the clues and we swapped them out in our second game, so I still hadn't seen them all. And I decided to be smart and chose a one-word clue, thinking I'm going to win. Well, the new card that went up was your opponent tells you exactly how long their word is. <laughs> and well, then there's only two guesses in the English language for one-letter words. Right. And one of those wasn't even in the tiles. <laughs> so I, I that was the game that lasted less than five minutes. Right. So yes, that is an important strategy tip for those of you trying a little wordy. Look at the clues before you pick your word, especially ones that say if there's two of something, make sure you don't use a word with two of something and so on. Well, and, and also, I mean, even just the rhyming one, right? If you can, mm -hmm. you know, pick if, words if that can... rhyme with multiple things. He's absolutely don't pick orange. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, that one got used on me. The word I picked was Zenith. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, does anything rise with Zenith? Well, they do. I believe the clue is you can just make up something, right? As long as yeah, but then you're like, wait, with Penis? <laughs> like, well, you're going to guess every letter but the first one, right? Plinith? Does Plinith rhyme with Zenith? And is it Zenith or Zenith? <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Uh, the rules are very clear. Uh, what I hadn't mentioned yet that is important is they have an online dictionary specifically for this game that has cute little uh, oatmeal graphics of happy cats or upset cats if, you, uh, if, you, if your word is valid or not. And one of the things I do love about this game is I beat Deanna once due to a spelling error on her part wow. using that app. So, <laughs> so back it up a bit. So when I was first contacted by a PR company who was representing Exploding Kittens, and they were like, oh, we're about to release the 10th game from Exploding Kittens. I admit I, I came really close to saying delete, uh, but I'm usually more professional of that. And I was really close to replying, no, thanks. This is not my style of game. And I don't think we'd be a good fit. Because at that point, I just assume anything from Exploding Kittens is going to be silly, take that party game, potentially featuring not safe from work, artwork, and content. That's just not my jam. I am so glad I actually went on to read the full email and click the link to see the press release. Because I'm sure I am not the only one shocked to learn that the Oatmeal went and published a real strategy game. Indeed, I think that's likely a mistake. It's completely understandable. Though now we can see that they're extending their range mm -hmm. into other avenues, which is a smart move for them to be certain. And something I appreciate seeing for the board game industry as a whole. Now, a, a Little Wordy is a brilliant, small footprint word game for two players. The rules are clear, concise, with no ambiguities. This is one of those games, too, where the rules are two pages. It's a, it was, it, it's a one fold-out sheet that's two-sided. Uh, this is one of those games where like, if you have the two of you sit down, one of you crack open the rules and read them while the other player punches out the word tiles and then just start playing. You'll be playing in minutes. Uh, just the entire system here is just clever. Uh, building words from the limited tiles. Uh, the fact you can do any link and then swapping them with your opponent and then using those tiles you got from them along with the clues to guess the opponent's word. It's just very well done. And just I, like after the first play, it just feels intuitive. Like I made a word. Here's what I used to make that word. All right, give me what you used to make your word. Now, what what can I what words can I make with these clues that I think you would have guessed? Like, really neat. And I really like the the berry system. The scoring system is brilliant because using different valued clues to give your opponent tokens removes the need to keep track of score. You're not you don't have to have a score sheet like so many of these word games. You're writing down your word score, having to do some math. There's no math. You just hand them the number that's at the top of the card. And I'm sorry, that's counting, not math. At that point, you just hand them tokens. Plus, there's the added benefit of making it really obvious what position you're in. You can easily look over and count how many tokens your opponent has, which, again, if you're playing smart, is going to determine which clues you use because you don't want to give them that edge. Now, the other benefit of this, and Sean's already brought this up, is that it really rewards players for choosing clever words and not just for making the biggest word they can. Yeah, based on the, on the clues I've heard so far, and again, I haven't played this personally, you really have to 
think about your clues, right? The, mm. the person who can spell anti-disestablishmentarianism is not necessarily going to win because the clues can pull out some of that tricky stuff pretty yeah. quickly. Uh, whereas, you know, that, that quirky little word that, that's just sort of obscure enough uh, and, and, and unusual Mm -hmm. maybe the one or or perhaps it's that really common word that's, that happens to fit in you know again it all it's all going to depend on those clues that are out there at the time and the and being able to be flexible enough in your mm -hmm. vocabulary to to jump between you know that common word that that could or oh look mm -hmm. we don't have any of these uh, clues this time this is where i can drop something that's you know yes. the same number of letters as as i usually use but is just a bizarre word mm -hmm. And and with that, like there are clues specifically for the rare letters, the the J Q's, Z's, and X. If that clue's in play, you probably don't want to use those letters. Whereas if that clue's not in play, you might want to throw one of those big xylophone words down or something. So with starting a word with X, you're really limiting the amount of options people are going to guess on you. So that again, another aspect. Because Xerox is a proper noun. Yes, it is. Now, there is one aspect of the game I, I think would have been better, honestly, left out of the box. Um, I don't like it when companies try to shoehorn in different player counts. Though I do appreciate if they were like, I have a two-player game, and here's the, the multiplayer variant, and it's a real variant. That's not here. They, they have a section, I'm playing this with teams, that basically says, work together to build your secret word and work together to guess, but be careful what you say out loud. Like, that's it. Like, come on. Like, it's a two-player game in this case. Like, that's something you could do with every board game. It's like saying Monopoly can be played 10 players if two players team up and, and make decisions together. No, no, that doesn't count as having a higher player count. Yeah, not not really much you could do without changing the game, I think. You'd need yeah. a, a real variant game in order to... Uh... Yeah, like, maybe you'd have to pull out three different bags or something. Like, maybe they'll put out, like, a, a, a buy two copies in a way for them to work together or something. But how this game is now, two-player only. Now, I do have one actual complaint uh, that I got to say. Again, it's me being selfish. I wish it came with tiles uh, instead of chits. Like, I, I realize I'm spoiled. I get it. But I can't help by not wanting tiles in my tile game, not cardboard chits. I... I I get it. Like, it makes sense, right? To keep the price point at only $15 US, they probably couldn't make a game with plastic tiles and still make any money. And no matter what anyone says about the board game industry, the publishers are in it to make money. Now, what this does lead me to want is a deluxe edition. And I know they've done this for some of their other games. So maybe if this game does well enough, or as well as it deserves, honestly, that's something we may see in the future is a deluxe little wordy or an upgrade set with some nice Bakelite tiles. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting choice. But I was looking at the rest of their games, which do have, pla or some of their games, which do have plastic components, and they're mm -hmm. all priced at $30 MSRP. Right. Uh, this is actually the lowest priced non-expansion game in the entire Exploding Kittens catalog. Wow. So I guess they are trying to get in on that lower end of the market with it and leverage people up into their other games through that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, overall, I'm sure you can tell, uh, we've been talking pretty enthusiastically about this. I was impressed by a little wordy. Now, a big part of this is due to the fact, the, the, the pedigree, the fact it's deploying kittens. And all I got to admit, I wasn't expecting much, right? This is a company that makes kinds of games I don't usually want to play. Uh, but a little wordy is now an exception to that rule. I will now consider all future games by exploding kittens to say, hey, that might interest me. Now, another aspect, though, which isn't just the fact that, oh, it's playing put, put out a party game, but they put out a good one. Like, this is a really solid tile-based word game. It's not just a unique special flower in their, their, their catalog, but they made a good game. I have enjoyed every play of A Little Wordy, and I look forward to the coming months because where I think this one's going to shine for my personal taste is my wife and I like to go out to a brew pub or go to a coffee shop and play on the tables. And those these places are famous for having little tiny tables. Well, this is one of those games with a small footprint, and I think, I think it's going to be perfect for playing in those kind of venues. Though, again, the cardboard chits could get ruined if I spill my beer, whereas tiles won't. If you dig the oatmeal's work, and don't mind games with a bit more meat on them than games about kittens exploding or take that style party games, I do welcome you to check out a little wordy. Like, make, take this as your next step. See if you enjoy something with a bit more meat on it. Now, if you're like me and don't usually enjoy those kinds of games, 
don't write off exploding kittens on a little wordy. This is a significant departure from their usual fare that I think is worth trying. Now, if you dig word games at all, just go grab this. It's 15 bucks. It's, it's a great price. Grab it when you can. There's a solid game here in a small box. It's very portable for a small price. Now, if you aren't usually a fan of word games, specifically it's dude always losing with players who have a bigger vocabulary or who are great at memorizing word lists or just are good at the math of the games, you may want to give this one a shot. Uh, to be honest, I like word building games, but I hate constantly losing to my wife in them. This is a game where we're both on the same level, and I greatly appreciate that. This is much more about being clever than building the biggest, most impressive word. Well, that's it for our look at A Little Wordy by Exploding Kittens. And for a somewhat more detailed look at this word game, check out the written review at tabletopbellhop.com.